Howdy folks and welcome to Coffee and Tools this week. Uh, this is Monday and I usually do a hack. Well, we're going to do a hack. We're going to do a $20 gaming machine. I'm going to give you the part number so you can see what the build is. The build is not that bad at all, but here's the thing. I was suffering trying to play some basic online games that I've always enjoyed. I've had them for years, but they've gotten to a point where they require a certain amount of graphic power and whatever. And my machines just have not kept up. In fact, I had uh, I went through two machines that were HP's because it seems like that's always the cheap one to buy. The second one, uh, this last one, just before we hit this one here, was a Slimline by HP. And I had to find a Slimline graphics card. Anyways, the whole thing didn't work. It would crash and lock up and there was a lot of problems. The other thing I had to think about was the bottleneck, as I like to call it. Yeah, so one of the problems is the internet. It, it, the internet is a big, big bottleneck problem and it's... If you don't have real, honest to God, high speed internet, then what's the point? You know, your, your computer could be as powerful as you want, but if you have slow, high speed internet, like I do, then that expensive machine isn't gonna do a darn thing for you. Uh, the other problem I had was the uh, budget situation. I really didn't have any extra money to say, oh, I'm gonna go spend a bunch of money on a, a gaming machine because you know I play once a week or maybe twice a week, so there's no point. Even though, uh, let's talk about the games. I'm just gonna tell you about the games because they do require a certain amount of graphic power. Not much, but in this day and age even, sometimes it's a bit of a reach and a budget for any of us poor buggers. Uh, World of Tanks and World of Warships are two of my favorites because you can go on, play them for 15 minutes and you're out of there again and you're done, you know. No sponsorship, no, nobody's paying me to talk about those games at all. But those are two of my favorites because they don't tie me up for a very long period of time. I have a great time when I play them and in up to maybe 45 minutes and it's like, I'm done, you know, I can, I just, that's it, I'm good. So. The requirements for those games is not that high, but surprisingly, uh, you know, some of your basic HPs like I had a like Slimline wouldn't run. It would freeze and lock up. I added a GTX card and still had problems, you know, freezing, locking up and started glowing on the forms and things. And it was like, I'm not getting anywhere. And it's like, I need something better. So I thought I would keep my eye out for another machine maybe something a little bit newer, but something that I could say upgrade cheaply and at least get the kind of, you know, graphics that I need for those basic games, uh, World of uh, Warships, World of uh, Tanks, uh, Warcraft, EVE Online. Uh, there's just a bunch of these, you know, you know, games that I like to play and I like to have them in my system. And the problem is, is, you know, they don't require a lot of power, only a little bit of power. Uh, World of Warships, for example, I'll just use them for example, uh, minimum four gigabytes of RAM. So that should be a no brainer, but we'll come back to that a little bit later on because that's not, that's what they're saying, but that's not necessarily the truth. You know, the truth is more RAM would be better. And we'll, I guess, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, to find something within budget, I found myself at some different junk stores, yard sales, whatever, and looking at old HP machines, and I was looking for a specific one. Uh, and I found it, and it was a just a junk store. The guy was like, yeah, $10, get it out of here. You know, it's just an old HP, ha, ha, ha. It's right there. It's an old HP. It's uh, about 2012 model, but it had, it has an AMD with an FM1 socket. Now, that is not gonna run uh, a Ryzen 5 chip, for example, but it will run a certain AMD that has Radeon graphics that are fairly decent in it, that won't require a graphics card. Whoa, no graphics card. Yeah, both of these builds have no graphics card. They're just based on what's in the CPU and will run those games pretty decent. This one will run at low res. This one will probably run whatever you want for settings. But this one here is the $20 machine. It was $10 for the machine and I had to search eBay for a while until I found the specific uh, chip to change out to get the graphic power, the Radeon graphics that I needed in order to run. And this one will run all those games I just mentioned and it'll run at low resolution but it'll run fine and doesn't lock up and no, no weird, you know, uh, weird things going on with the game. So I was pretty happy with that. And that was like predated to the Ryzen uh, chips that came out later on, which have powerful graphics in them, in my opinion. 
and will allow you again to run without a graphics card, especially this past uh, last couple of years where graphic card prices have gone, you know, up like a SpaceX rocket. So welcome to my uh, little computer room here. <laughs> and this is, I'm going to give you the part numbers to this one here first and show you what machine I bought for the $10, which said, I've seen them on eBay, I've seen them online, and I have seen the machines laying around at different yard sales and places. So you can find them. And the whole secret to this one is all you gotta do is change that chip and you have a machine that will do what we just talked about, which was, you know, some basic, you know, some pretty decent gaming on it. And if you, and here's the other thing I wanted to get back to was the RAM thing. Uh, AMD, specifically with their graphics, using the Radeon graphics and stuff, will lean a little bit on the RAM. So you actually should probably boost your RAM, even if they don't say you need to, you probably should anyways. This specific model will come uh, stock with a six gigabytes of RAM on the motherboard, which was like, okay, we'll leave it at that. I probably should have bumped it up and uh, you know did an upgrade on it. I did not. Uh, I did pull the hard drive and toss it away, but I've got SSDs uh, in various sizes. And again, for gaming, if you're really not producing much of anything else than a gaming machine, you could probably get away with like the 512, you know, gigabyte SSD card. And you can pick one of those up pretty cheaply these days, but I have a, a number of them just laying around that I'm not using. So I had one that was already preloaded with Windows and those games I mentioned already in. So all I had to do was unplug the old hard drive and plug the SSD in. And it was like I had upgraded, theoretically I had sped the machine up, but also I did not change the RAM, change the chip, use the same original cooling fan that comes with the original chip, you're good to go, you know, you have it. And for $20, you got a gaming machine, you know, pretty cool. I'm gonna give you the numbers and then you can, you know, go shop for yourself if you want. The first one I'm gonna do is this one right here and I'm gonna just put the uh, basic model number right here for you so you can see it. And that's that's all you need is to, if you, if you can find one of those, it takes an FM1 socket and it's upgradable. The next item is the CPU. That's the only part I changed in this to create, well, I, okay, I changed it to an SSD, but that's that to me is a no-brainer in this day and age. But the other part I'm gonna put up, I'm gonna post right now, will also be the chip I bought. And that is like a, almost a pre-dawn to what was became later on as what we now talk about is the, it was like the first generation of Ryzen or pre-generation of Ryzen before the Ryzen chips came out. The Ryzen chips will allow you enough graphic power in them that you don't necessarily need to go running out to buy a graphics card unless you really demand, if you have high speed internet that's like, you know, I don't know, a gig, one, you know, 500 megabits per second or something, and you have, uh, you know, a demanding machine and you want to run the best graphics possible, that sort of thing, then yeah, okay, fine, get your graphics card. But otherwise, if you're like me and you're kind of on a budget, <clears throat> you don't have a lot of money to spend on this stuff, then the Ryzen is the other answer. So the next machine we're gonna talk about is the is the build. Now this build here uh, was just around the 200 uh, plus dollar range. And there was a couple of uh, givens. First off, the cabinet I've got here is, uh, you can get them on uh, Amazon. And again, I'll give you, I'll see if I can find a link for this but this specific one, the LED lights don't work in it. And it was like, so it was like, you know, almost free. It was like just being given away because, you know, it doesn't work. Already had a power supply laying around that was uh, a gaming type power supply, good up to 650 watts was like, oh, we'll put it in the machine. So that got down to where, okay, now I just need, I need a motherboard and uh, RAM for the motherboard. I already have an SSD, already have power supply, I have a case. You know, there's not that much to buy at that point. Oh, and a cooling, cooling fan. So the motherboard was around $60. It was an open box, again, found at uh, Amazon. And the RAM was the only place I had to sort of bite the bullet a little bit. I had to pay $60 for RAM, which I was not happy with, but it was like, you know, you need the 16 gigs of RAM. So it's like, well, you know, I'm gonna buy it. Uh, one of the reasons we're doing this show today is because we've done 3D printers, we've done lasers, uh, we've talked about software in general, and a lot of different 
uh, applications around the tools in the garage and stuff. And this is one of those garage type projects that was going on at the time. And I thought, you know what, may as well share that on a Monday, just show everybody what we're doing. And uh, I thought there'd be a few people that might be a little surprised and go, whoa, you mean to tell me with a Ryzen chip, I don't need a graphics card? Uh-huh, yeah, you can get away with it. So, you know, pretty good buy all the way around. But there's ways to buy it, and there's ways not to buy it. So now, to get that motherboard and the RAM, the next thing we needed was a chip. Now, if you buy uh, a chip that's in a box with a fan and everything, you're gonna pay top dollar. I don't care if it's eBay or Amazon or wherever you're shopping, you're probably gonna pay around $150. However, if you buy just the fan by itself, a lot of times on eBay, they'll have them kicking around on there for about $10, and that's what I did. I bought just the fan. Then I went shopping for just the CPU. So just the CPU only, and I bought in fact, that's the wrong box. I bought the Ryzen 3, but that's okay. Uh, 3300. And that particular chip, uh, I was able to find it down around uh, $80. And at that point, it was coming out of China, so it would take a while to deliver, but it was like, okay, fine. Uh, it had massive, like 10 or 15,000, whatever it was, feedback positive out of this place in China. So I'm like, okay, they're real. They are, they are going to sell me the chip. So I went ahead and paid them, and they sent me the chip. So the chip was good. I've got the fan. So between the fan and the chip, I only paid around $90 instead of $150 because I bought them individually. I bought them separate. In fact, the fan I bought was actually for the uh, Ryzen 5, but that doesn't matter. It's still going to work on the Ryzen 3. It's, not, it's, they're, it's virtually the same fan anyways. So that was how to save some money and also the open box and, the, and what have you. So really, when you, if you total it up, there isn't $210, $220 spent altogether. And so it's just a matter of whether you have that stuff on hand or not. You could, I could have gotten away with a 450 watt power supply kicking around, just didn't happen to have one, but I did have the 650, so it didn't cost me anything because I just went ahead and just chucked it in the, uh, in the build. So I'll give you a build list, and I guess I'll put that right here on the screen, and we'll give you a build list of what will, you know, is required to put this one together. Now this one, is showing an average of uh, 50 uh, FPS when it's on gaming. So that's not, again, that's not great, but it's not terrible, it's not bad, you know. Especially, I gotta keep underlining and saying, you know, because of the internet, I don't have, you know, real high-speed internet. I don't have uh, fiber optics or anything like that going on. I'm actually on a uh, cellular type system that is a home internet, but it's like, you know, it. It runs anywhere from 50 megabits a second download to up to 150 megabits. So it's like, it's it's all over the board. Some, I've seen it as slow as 20 for an hour and then go back up in speed again. So I don't have good internet. But, and again, because of that, there's no point in you or me spending thousands of dollars building a you know gaming PC that can't possibly do anything online. So that's part of you know what the solution was for myself, and I thought I'll share it with you guys because you might want to build the same thing or take a look at it. Other thing with this uh, particular machine, uh, the gaming machine with only a little over $200 spent, it's capable of doing whatever gaming you want. In fact, uh, I didn't do it, but there was some people that did test it on some of the latest, you know, Fantasy V and whatever it was, uh, games online that are, you know, that are requesting you know pretty powerful graphics and they were able to game they said there was virtually not much fluttering or anything they were playing low res at that point settings but they said it was gaming and it was doing fine so they were like i can game with this you know first person shooter type games like i'm in here and i'm doing okay with this what i'm doing is like world of warships world of tanks uh using that and it's like it is more than adequate for what i need so there was one other uh I guess we won't call it a caveat. Now there was one other uh, a problem that I ran into that uh, off the internet, nobody warned me. I hate that when that happens. The gaming PC that I built with the motherboard that I'm gonna show you, uh, it does not have, uh, didn't have any kind of Wi-Fi build. Yeah, it just had Cat5 cable. So it was like, okay, we need to put a Wi-Fi on there. Uh, I bought a reasonably good Wi-Fi for a uh, $15 on there for about 15 you got to add that to your bill cost I guess because unless you can ca you know cable direct to your modem or something I can't my modem is 
uh, about four rooms away from where I'm at in the house right now. So, you know, I'm just strictly wireless. And so I had to add that into the, uh, the build cost, I guess you could say. So there you go. There's two different machines, but $20 and you can get on there and play those games or you can spend a little bit more money and build a, not only a gaming machine, but this particular uh, build was good because you can put, you can get a hold of the Ryzen 5 chip and add it in there. So it's a little bit future proof for build because you will be able to expand the Ryzen 5 chip if you want to go that way in the near future. If you do, you should also change the RAM at that point. And at least have, in this case I built with 16 gigs of RAM because the uh, AMD chip has a tendency to sort of lean on that RAM a little more than uh, other chip, the other chipset uh, whose name we will not mention. So that was the PC build. Wow, you know. Uh, please let, smash that like button down below. It's right over there, you can't miss it. And, and that way maybe we can help share the channel a little bit and you know, really need those likes. <laughs> but uh, hey, thanks for viewing. And if you're interested, back up the video, take a look at those pieces and you can find them on Amazon and on eBay. And you can either build a $20 machine or if you decide you wanna take the big bite, the $300 machine and, well, I could say up to $300. Uh, I spent a little over $200. It could cost you three. I can't control that. That's the flexibility of the markets and what have you and just shopping out the parts. But I want to show you the, uh, the two builds because they're both significantly really cheap, but they got me to where I wanted to be. So meantime, thank you for viewing. <laughs> Thanks for watching Coffee and Tools. And please like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> We will see you Thursday with our draw. Our draw, if you want to get in on it, check the last episode. We have a draw. Yes, Thursday. Boom. We're giving something away. In the meantime, have a great week, guys, and over and out.